Hello YouTube, it's Wednesday, I'm Chris, it's Earth Juice. Coming up this week, space, it's bad for you. Tigers fighting back and birds and humans share musical minds. Here it is. Films like Star Wars and Flash Gordon, Gordon's alive! alive! Couldn't resist it. Anyway, both have people carrying on as if anyone can live in space. But Professor Kerry O'Banion from the University of Rochester in New York revealed that galactic cosmic radiation could be a real threat to future astronauts. And the deeper you travel into space, the more you'll be exposed to forms of radiation that could cause life-threatening diseases. Now, underneath our protective magnetosphere, we're safe. But far out in the interplanetary systems, highly charged radioactive particles bounce around all over the place. You, capable of penetrating an ordinary spacecraft, to protect yourself against these harmful rays, you would need to wrap your X-Wing fighter in around six feet of concrete. Not that aerodynamic for spaceflight, I presume. Although there's no air, so you can't be aerodynamic. Space dynamic? Anyway, these recent findings from O'Banion's team suggest that exposure to galactic radiation could cause cancers and accelerate the development of Alzheimer's. Does this mean that the possibility of visiting other life-supporting planets is now dashed? Well, hopefully not. And with this new data, scientists will be able to create new radiation fields for future crafts and also run screening processes for potential astronauts that could identify if they have a likelihood of developing any diseases on their trip to infinity and beyond. <laughs> Unfortunately, most news stories about wild tigers usually involve them either being killed for their skins or having their body parts made into medicines. But thankfully, recent reports reveal a brighter future. New studies have shown that through conservation efforts, wild tiger numbers are finally on the rise. In southwestern India, where tiger conservation started 25 years ago, over 600 tigers have been identified from camera traps. While in the Nagara Hole and Bandipur National Parks, tigers are literally spilling out into new reserves, with numbers increasing by as much as 50%. In Thailand, conservationists reported a tiger comeback in the Hai Kar Gang Hai this place. It's a wildlife sanctuary where numbers have risen steadily since 2007, with over 50 tigers being counted last year. And in Russia, government officials have brought in new laws to further protect endangered animals, while at the same time creating additional protected areas for tigers. So these new stats clearly show that conservation and government involvement is working, and with continued effort, wild tigers can be saved from extinction. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Oh, what is that? Is that actually music? Ah, thank you. Finally, neuroscientists at Emory University in America have recently discovered that birds also enjoy certain songs. The research compared the effect of song on both human and bird brain activity and found that both experience similar distaste and pleasure reactions to different types of song. Scientists discovered that pleasurable brain waves triggered in female birds listening to male bird song also occurred in people listening to music that they liked. While male sparrows listening to the song of another male displayed a similar response to that of a human listening to something truly awful. Researchers concluded that the neural response in both birds and humans appears to revolve around social situations, with both pleasure and distaste stimulating regions of the brain associated with emotion. These responses seem to use a shared evolutionary mechanism that both humans and birds need in order to survive, bringing a whole new meaning to the phrase bird-brained. So that was this week's news. Thanks for watching. Now go and watch something else. Go on, in Earth Files, there's dancing birds. I'll be back next week. See you then.